Welcome to Creative Bath Lab. Happy New Year's! Today I'm showing you how to make candles. Candles are mainly used for home scenting, but they can also set a soft and warm ambiance. Choose any glass container that can handle heat and make sure that it's clean. I actually run mine through the dishwasher. And if you're reusing a container that has a label, the easiest way to remove the label is by scraping it off. There are many different kinds of wax. Each comes with advantages and disadvantages. For instance, soy wax is natural and doesn't soot but paraffin wax holds the most fragrance. When ordering wax, check out the distributor's information provided. You can find useful information about the wax, like the best use for it, maximum fragrance rates, pour temperatures, and recommended wicks. Wicks are one of the most important components of a candle, if not the most important. There are many different types of wicks, but pre-tabbed wicks are the most popular and probably the easiest to use. To find the best wick, burn tests are crucial. The first thing to look for is a full melt pool, which they all have. Take a closer look at this one. A mushroom has formed so the wick is not the right size. This wick has a large and unstable flame, so it's not right. This is what you want. The wick has a small flame that burns slow and steady. And here is a wick that is too small. Choose whichever colorant type that you want. Just make sure it's specifically made for candles. I personally prefer the liquid candle colors. Shake the bottle well before each use. Liquid color is convenient and makes measuring easy, especially for achieving the same color every time. You'll need a pouring pot. I use large pots for melting a lot of wax at once. I use the smaller ones for making lots of different scents and for leftover wax to top off the candles. This pot is convenient for quickly measuring melted wax. The path to making a great candle starts with keeping notes. My notes include candle making procedures, tips and tricks, precise measurements, color recipes for each scent, Here's the different types of waxes that I've tried with notes on each. Here's my notes on wicks. And the most important notes are the burn tests. Here is an example of a burn test sheet with all the very important variables that can impact the final candle. I will link this sheet in the description. Straighten the wick, then glue it in the center. Use a long stick to secure the wick. I like to add the wick bar at this point. The paraffin wax that I use comes in big slabs. Heat a metal knife with a heat gun for easy cutting. I'm adding soy wax to increase burn time. Without it, the paraffin wax burns really quickly. And I'm adding Vibar to increase the scent throw. You can melt the wax on high heat, but just make sure that you're there to watch it. While that melts, measure out fragrance oil. Fragrance oil for candles is recommended and measure it out on a scale. I'm adding the maximum amount of fragrance oil allowed for this wax. Mm -hmm. 
Turn the heat off here and then stir the wax until the rest is completely melted. The wax temperature should be at 185 degrees to add color and fragrance oil. Stir well, then cool wax a bit for pouring. While wax is cooling, heat container for better wax adhesion to the glass. Pour wax in slowly so bubbles do not form. Stop at the top widest part of the jar. Save the rest of the wax to top the jar off. If you added mica, wait until the wax is almost cooled then stir. This ensures the mica remains suspended in the wax and doesn't settle on the bottom. Once the candle has cooled completely, top it off. This requires going through the same steps as before. Leave some space at the top. Now trim the wick and heat the sides for easy cleanup. For best results, cure the candles for 24 hours before burning them. For diagonal layers, tilt the jar. Wait until the previous layer has cooled completely at least three to five hours before pouring another layer. The most common issue with paraffin wax is wet spots. These things used to drive me crazy. You can heat the sides and release the air bubbles, but I don't recommend it. First, it's not a big deal. Even the biggest companies have this issue. But most importantly, heating the jar melts the wax, which releases scent, which will decrease scent throw for the final candle. Making your own candles is very satisfying. You can save money while making a candle that is perfect for you. I actually love burning candles, especially when I'm cleaning. Be sure to check out the description for helpful tips and the supply list at the bottom. Subscribe now for more creative bath inspiration with weekly videos featuring fresh ideas and fun bath projects.